dribbled as he walked to school. He would dribble in movie theaters. He would lie across the back seat and dribble the ball outside of a car door while his. Why? Stop! Wait, wait. If you think I cross and take my man's out, just kill yourself in the trenches. Forty on my help, I had to fix my. What's good, you two? Nah, saying it's your boy Kai. It's your boy Jump Man Jada. We back in another video, y'all. Nah, saying today, y'all, bro. We got somebody y'all love, bro. Pistol Pete. <laughs> <laughs> but we got his seven stories that prove Pete, what, Mark Maravich? Maravich. Maravich was not human. Man, bro, we already seen heck of videos, so we could tell he's not human. Like, not at all, bro. He's not, not, at not all. human at all, bro. Not a single bit. But this going to tell a story, seven stories about him, bro. So, shoot, this is going to be an interesting video. I ain't going to lie. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, and all that. You know what I'm saying? Subscribe to Netflix Twins. Let me straight to this bit. <clears throat> you think Larry Bird beating Pete in the in the movie one? Mm, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. He pretty taller though. It might be a good game though. That's gonna be a good game though. Y'all comment down below if y'all think winning, bro. Pistol That's Pete or Larry Bird? That's a good game. Pistol Pete busy though, bro. Larry get busy too, bro. Mm -hmm. Pistol Pete handles is just. Larry <sighs> straight to bear. We're going to pay tribute to one of the greatest basketball players of all time, Pete Maravich. I'm going to share with you some stories about his unbelievable work ethic, his legendary scoring ability, his prediction of his own death, and we're going to talk about the lasting Excuse impact me? he's had on the game. So how are you guys doing? My name is Mike, and how before did he we die? take a journey into We're going to find out. I think he died from a heart attack, though, but... A time period that saw him work harder at the game of basketball than anyone I've ever heard of. Before we remember Pete's record-breaking years, years in LSU, before we remember his mm. brief stardom in the NBA, before we remember the floppy socks, we first need to look at the greatest tragedy of the basketball career of Pistol Pete. And that was the man was just born into the wrong era. Number seven, a man before his time. From his early childhood up until his last seasons as a pro pete maravich hey. played the game of basketball without a three-point lines and without a hand check rule now i'm going to go more into depth as to what that meant for his stats as we get later into this video but let's just talk about what this meant for his career in general when you watch highlights of pistol pete when you hear stories of his play you quickly realize that the man was before his time he would consistently pull up from as deep as 30 feet out even though his bombs would only count for two points because that's how incredible That's his range crazy. and shooting ability were. And so, if his opponents were forced to guard him from 30 feet and in, if they were not allowed to control him with a hand check, well, he would have been virtually unstoppable. Drop Pete in the modern NBA, and you suddenly have a man who has the potential to be a cross between Steph Curry and Steve Nash. That's how good both his jump shot and court vision were. That's how oh! Nash. Wait a minute! Whoa! Jump shot and court vision. Work. That's how deadly of a score oh, and oh, oh. Wait, no, that pass is so crazy. We hear what he's saying, y'all, by the way. But we can't ignore that pass he just did, though. Like, what? What? <laughs> what? Crazy. His jump no, shot and court vision work. That's how deadly oh, of a score and playmaker he was. And on top of all of this, the man had perhaps more imagination and creativity than any player who has ever stepped foot on a basketball court. So as we continue to talk about the legend that was Pistol Pete Maravich, just remember, for as good as he was, he could have been even hey. better. Number six, a basketball android. Yes, looking back at his childhood, Pete Maravich described his kid self as a basketball android. This was a very accurate self-assessment as his earliest memories are of his dad, Press, basically forcing a love of the game into his soul. Now, Press was a former professional basketball player who was never a star. This haunted him and he vowed that his son would become a greater player than he himself had ever been. And so, okay. when Pete was a kid, Press would often send him inside and shoot around on a basketball hoop outside of their house. Pete would 
would watch from the window as his dad shot baskets for hours and made it seem like the most fun thing anyone has ever done. Press would pump his fist after long jump shots, yell in celebration after performing tricky dribble moves, and most importantly, he didn't let Pete join in. And so Pete grew jealous, and when he thought that's he so hates, smart, though. oh god, it make him even working more harder for the jump. Dang near, bro. Yes, yeah, like it builds a excitement. It's yes, not like bro. he's forcing to do it. Oh, he's God. forcing he's forcing the love on him, yeah, by making them watch him go hoop so he could be like, Oh, I wanna I wanna oh, do that. God. This is so bro. fun, I gotta Tell do me it. Dad, bro. I, I'm doing it to my child. I ain't gonna cap, bro. God, I'm taking no that. Cap. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> run outside and steal some alone time dribbling and trying to shoot baskets himself. That's when he made, he made his he made his son a basketball That's fiend. Crazy, bro. He, he made, made his son a fiend. fiend. He didn't want to have me. He just shoot one <laughs> basket. Oh, God, <laughs> One free, you got a free throw on you. <laughs> because as Pete began to get older, he also began to excel at baseball and football. So within a span of a few months, Press brought Pete out to catch fly balls on a particularly sunny day and didn't stop until Pete missed a ball and it hit him in the face. At that moment, what? Press convinced a crying Pete that baseball wasn't for him. And as for the football, he's a mastermind. Oh my God, who is this? He's purposely Bro. giving him trauma. So he can love yes, basketball. Bro. What the freak? His dad is 10, 30 steps ahead. 55 steps Oh, God. Ahead. I've never heard of this before, bro. What? He is purposely giving him trauma so he can only love basketball. Oh, God. Bro, it's not for you, bro. You gotta find, you gotta find one for you. For you, bro. You see, he just hit your face like that, bro. This man is a genius. Well, Press went even further. He actually told Pete's eighth grade coach to put then quarterback Pete into danger as much as possible. And after Pete got what? time and time again on the field, he decided to stick with basketball. So yeah. He had no other decision though. This is crazy. He was basically a psychopath. Sure, he was a loving father who wanted the best for his son, but the way he forced Pete to play basketball was kind of questionable. But that's not a psycho. That's not a psychopath. Nah, He's, it's just like he's just thinking more like smart. He's doing it in a way, but he could like yeah. actually like get the love for the jump. Because because jumper. because let's say let's say if he he verbally was like, son, you need to do, no, you can't do baseball, like, bringing his dreams down. Yes, bro. You know what I'm saying? He's That's like... Parents be, some parents be doing that, too. He, he's, exactly. He's moving more differently than every other parent. Exactly, bro. Like, bro. So, parents. like, he's, like, getting a natural love for the game, like, a natural addiction of the game instead of, like, him forcing it, like, literally forcing it, like, no, you're not playing basketball, you're not playing football. He's put him in situations to where in the future, if... Out. If you be hard on him about something in basketball, he's not gonna be like, I never wanna play basketball anyway. I hate you, Dad. I hate everything oh about it. Like he he's forced to he they basically like mentally like getting him right. I don't know, but it, it's just smart. It's not psychopath. I don't know what you're talking Pete about. Doesn't hold anything against press. That's because Pete knew his dad was right. He should stick to basketball. Number five, the greatest work ethic of all time. The way people talk about him now, it seems like Pete Maravich began to dribble a basketball the second he came out the womb. He dribbled as he walked to school. He would dribble in movie theaters. He would lie across the back seat and dribble the ball outside of a car door while his- Why? Stop wait, 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 wait. Stop playing! Wait, why driving? No way. He Stop. No. Wild Park. No Wild Park. Car door while his dad drove him around. Drove him around. He drove him around. He drove him around. He was driving. That's crazy. By any means possible, you can't take a regular car ride, George. You're not even taking naps in the car. You keep not. He dribbling. You're not taking no naps in the car. He is dribbling. <laughs> what? He said on the way to school in the movie. It's the movie theater, bro. You gonna have to fight me for dribbling the movie. Finally, hear the bop, the bop, the ball bouncing, bro. He's scrapping, bro. That's like, bro. It's crazy. While his dribbling practice methods were already the stories of legends, that's not all Pete was practicing. His work ethic could only be described as relentless. As on school days, he would often practice as many as eight hours a day, getting in shots before school, then working on dribbling drills and one-on-one -on -one moves. Go to school after eight hours yeah. a day. All but ignored his homework, and when teachers called home, Press told them to mind their own. 
own business because to him, basketball was way more important. And since school days were filled with basketball, it should come as no surprise that summer days were even more intense. Every day of the summer, Pete would wake up at 6 a.m., practice by himself at the local basketball court until other people showed up, play pickup games all day, then shoot free throws by himself when everyone else had left. This incredible work what? ethic produced unreal results, and by the time he was in 8th grade, he was already playing on his town's varsity team. It was then that he was given the nickname Pistol after dropping 33 points on a division rival, despite the fact that at the time he stood at just 5 foot 6 and weighed around 85 pounds. But of course, eventually- 85? What? Bro wasn't even a buck yet. Bro wasn't even a, a hundred pounds, bro. Score of 30? And he dropping 30 point five, games. We did 5, 6, 5, th bro. Bro, yes. 5, five 6, 85 pounds. 87 pounds. Bro. This is getting out of hand, bro. What? He, what? Pete would begin to grow. And as he grew in height, his legend grew right along with him. His high school career saw him dazzle fans with his incredible no-look passes, his unbelievable court What? And his the fuck did he just do? No. 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 no -look passes, his unbelievable court vision, and his unlimited shooting range. No one had ever seen a basketball player like Pistol Pete. And by the time he was a senior, he had grown to stand at six foot five and was now almost unguardable. High school competition became too easy, and soon Pete found himself scrimmaging against and dominating his father's teams at NC State, routinely lighting up starters Father in a team? team that would finish 20 and 4 in the ACC. From there, Pete played one season at prep school, then committed to play for his dad at LSU, where he became number four. The greatest college scorer we've ever seen. Let it be known his that Pete was the coach's the greatest scorer in coach. college basketball history and no one else is even close. While at LSU, Pete set and still holds the record for points in an NCAA career with 3,667. Now, this <clears throat> is already absurd. But it's even more impressive. Yo, he's choking that thing, though, bro. These last three years is crazy. Give me that. Now, this number is Pull up right in your absurd. face. But it's even more impressive when you consider these three things. Number one, again, Pete was playing without three a three-point line. Those are all three. He three, averaged three. about 17 made field goals a game. When comparing him to Steph Curry, again, a player who played just like Pete, Steph averaged 8.4 made field goals a game in his college career. And of those 8.4 shots made, four were three-pointers. So if we're being cautious and say that Pete would have averaged five made threes a game for his LSU career, then that means he would have added an extra 415 points to his career point total. Number two, when people Ooh. played college basketball, there was no shot clock. Obviously, the addition of a shot clock would have meant more possession. Oh my, is no shot clock? For Pete. Number three, Pete Maravich only played college basketball for three seasons. Yup. Pistol Pete holds the record for points in a college basketball career, and he was only allowed to play in three seasons because at the time, freshmen were not allowed to play college basketball. Yeah, this rule was ridiculous, and yeah, the fact that he only played in three seasons makes Pete's record even more ridiculous. In three seasons, Maravich averaged a seemingly unrealistic 44.2 points per game. He was a three-time first-team All-American, two-time National Player of the Year, and the most famous college basketball player the world has ever seen. As in his time at LSU, Pete became a national sensation. His signature haircut and floppy sock combo was now recreated by kids and high school players across the country. The LSU Tigers began to draw record-setting crowds, a fact that was remarkable in SEC football territory. Local reporters who had never been to a basketball game before were now following LSU Ooh, across man. the country. Ooh. Opposing fans would carry Pete on their shoulders after games. Pete's socks even began to be routinely stolen from the LSU locker room. The Don't only really? knock on Pete during this time was that his team never reached the NCAA tournament, but that was hardly his fault. The year before Pete Dang. joined the LSU varsity team, the Tigers went an awe-inspiring 3-20, and and by the time he left, the program was in a way different place. Now they were a national name. They reached the final four of the NIT, and as for Pete, well, now it was finally time for the pistol to bring his talents to the bright lights of the NBA. Number three, 68 points. Throughout his yeah, NBA career, Pete averaged 24.2 points. Make sure, yeah, make sure you go watch that video, man. Okay.
We reacted to this game. And 4 .2 rebounds a game. He is one of only six players in NBA history to ever average 24 points, five assists, and four rebounds for his career. He is also the mm. only player on that list to never win an NBA championship, which was disappointing. And as a whole, Pete's mm. career can't exactly be called disappointing, but just like in high school and college, the individual stats and awards were always there. Pete played in the NBA for nine seasons without any major injury concerns. Then two seasons after injury concerns took place. In those nine injury free seasons, Maravich was a five-time All-Star, was twice a member of the second team All-NBA, and twice a member of the first team All-NBA. His most dominant year was in 1977, where he put up a league high 31.1 points to go along with 5.4 assists and 5.1 rebounds a night. He scored 50 Dang. points or more four times in 77, and against the Knicks, Pete went off for 68 points before fouling out after two questionable offensive fouls in the closing minutes of the game. But with all of this said, the 1977 Jazz did not even make the playoffs. And an even bigger problem was this wasn't a surprise. As in his nine healthy years, Pete never played on a team that reached even the conference finals. And after three straight playoff years to begin his career, his final six healthy years saw him play on losing teams. And of course, while some are going to say that this was because he was a ball hog, because he was a showman because he was whatever think about this for much of pete's career the nba only had 17 or 18 teams in that time for whatever reason the league would routinely have as many as 28 or 30 all-stars in a single year now in pete maravich's nine healthy seasons 231 total all-stars were chosen which was almost 26 a season of those 231 players a grand total of 10 played on teams that pete played on which meant about one all-star out of 26 each year was either Pete himself or his teammate. Going even further, Pete only played with two other all-stars in those entire nine seasons. So yeah, while the media what? may have gotten on his back only two time, all -stars? I don't really know what they wanted Pete to do. The man just never played with any real talent. Give him an all-star level big man and everything changes. But Stop if you're wicked. still not For real, give him one shot. of the all-time oh girls, then just listen to what Pete, his uh, peers had to He was the ultimate uh, Instead of his peers. To really understand just how good Pete Maravich was, I'm going to present you with some quotes from six players who are in the Hall of Fame and one player who soon will be. He was way before his time. I don't know if you'll ever see a ball handler like him F. Dominique Wilkins. Anytime they talk about today's players and how good they are, I say you haven't seen Pete Maravich. Calvin Murphy. I learned a long time ago that you take something from greatness and add it to your game. Pete showed me how to score how to put the ball in the hole george gervin he was the greatest ball Finger handler up. i've ever seen in my life he could do things Very with bear? the ball that yeah. were unbelievable rick <laughs> barry Oscar was the best guard I've ever played against. Jerry West was the best I've ever played with. Wait, excuse me, the freaking pass he did? The best guard I've ever played against. Jerry West was the oh, best. What the freak? And Pete is the best I've ever seen. Elgin Baylor. Like a master chess player, he saw things that nobody else did. Bill Walton. We're all doing things he did first. Steve Nash. And while I hope these quotes have helped to give you an idea of what Pete Maravich meant to the game of basketball, let's end on this one quote. I don't want to play 10 years in the NBA and then die of a heart attack at the age of 40. That quote was from a 26-year-old Pete Maravich and, and number one, predicted his own death. What? In his last season as a professional basketball player, Pete rode the bench for a Boston Celtics team that would lose... Pete, the Pete, Pete, Pete and Robert was teammates? No way. What's going on? There was, there was teammates. How did, they, how did they let this happen? He said it was riding a bench. But how, like, how though, like, At this point, they laid right, right there. And the fire for basketball that had once Pass consumed his soul Pass that had been extinct. <laughs> Pass that bitch, what the fuck? At the young age of 32, Pete Maravich retired and asked himself, what's next? Basketball had been his entire life, and now there was an emptiness in his heart that he found almost impossible to fill. The years following his retirement were filled with dark moments. He began to drink, he prepared for oh. the apocalypse, his family and friends became more and more worried. And I could go into more detail 
detail about those times, but I'd just rather not. Instead, let's talk about the years leading up to his death. The years that saw things turn around for Pete. In these years, he found true meaning in life away from basketball. He became a better family man, a reformed alcoholic, he and everybody. a born-again yeah. Christian. It was this Pete, a happy Pete, that took the court to film a quick segment of pickup basketball for a Christian radio show. In this pickup game, sorry, Pete felt real you know. joy on the court for the first time in a long time. Telling those around him, I feel great. It was then that he collapsed. Moments later, dead at the age of 40. In a bizarre twist, he had predicted his own death, as he indeed had died of heart failure due to an undiagnosed heart condition. And with Dang. the passing of Pete Maravich, the country saw itself lose one of its biggest basketball icons. Across the United States, newspapers such as the New York Post would go on to devote their entire back pages to Pete. And Post writer Peter Vesey put it best, writing, The pistol dies playing the game he loved. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope Dang, you enjoyed it. Shoot, that's all you love. Shit, I, I'd rather go out Bro. on the court than they they get shot, stabbed, yeah. robbed, suicide. No, no, no. That's facts, though. Bro, RPP, but that man RPP. RPP. Go, bro. That's crazy. The no. W video, bro. No cap. I'm not gonna no lie, cap. bro. W that video. That was a W video. For sure. If y'all wanna see my videos like that, wanna comment down below some no other ones y'all wanna see or whatever. You feel me? Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, and all that. Subscribe to the Effortless Twins, bro. Yeah, I'm just there. Okay. <laughs> 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 belly trucks with semi-suckler. Hot them turn the city up. Be wild and don't get any.